Next item, please. <clears throat> Citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who are signed in by 710 by submitting a blue card to the board secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments, <clears throat> excuse me, comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or school district employees. Please keep your comments as brief as possible, and the board president reserves the right to limit times. I am going to say we have a huge stack of blue cards, and I thank everyone for coming out tonight to share your, your thoughts with us. Um, so I am going to have to adhere very strictly to the three-minute uh, rule. Um, I will let you know when we're down to about 15 seconds left, and I'll ask you to please wrap up your thoughts. So, And if we have any students that have filled out blue cards, it doesn't necessarily say on the blue cards, but I'd like to have them come up first because <laughs> then we can dismiss them and allow them to go. Quick question. Do you want me to announce the name and then they can say whether or not they're a student, or should we just have the student? Um, if there were any students that filled out blue cards, can you let us know? I think that would be faster. There's one over there. Anyone else? There's a couple. As you come up, can you tell us your name so that right, I can pull you your can pull. I can pull your blue card? Yeah. So I guess students come first because we know you need to get to bed at a decent time. So do I. <laughs> you can paper rock who goes first. Yeah. <laughs> And just for future notice, we should probably have somewhere on the blue card where it designate whether it's a student or not. Okay. All right. So as you come up, can you tell us your pull the pull it down, and then tell us your name before you speak, so I can find your blue card. Okay. Say it one more time. Ranial Found you. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Ready? You got to say what oh. she's. I'm going to say what you're going to say, or I'm going to, she's going to speak to the board about recent concerns at school. So go ahead. Okay. Good evening. My name is Rania Futlawi, and today I hope to speak on behalf of the students at Henry Ford Early College. I am a junior at the Henry Ford Early College program. In my full three years of attending HFEC, I have never been mistreated, discriminated against, or hurt in any way, shape, or form from staff members or principals at HFEC. From my first day as a freshman, I have had the support and resources provided for me by our principal in order for me to succeed in my education. I have never felt alone, unsupported, or unprepared before. My principal and teachers work together to make sure that I had never have to experience that. Knowing our principal for three years, I have always been treated with respect and kindness. He treated us students like his own children and always pushed us to succeed. Our principal gave us the love and support we need to do good in school. He has been working in our district for over 20 years and is a vital individual in our community. Throughout all of those years, we have never heard anything less than praise from our principal. Why do all of these allegations come out now? As a student attending HFSC, I can strongly say that these allegations are false and our principal does not deserve to be bashed on social media from supposedly respected people in our community. Some individuals are claiming that our principal is specifically racist towards Iraqis and Yemenis. As a Iraqi student, I have never once in my three years been mistreated in any type of way, and I'm positive other students can agree with me. As a student, why should I have to deal with all these false political issues going on when I should be worrying about my education? Thank you, and I hope you take this into consideration. Can you please state your name? Hi, my name is Annika Gaston. Hold on one second. I wrote someone's name on there. Please do not yep. refer to them as by the name. Now you would like to come to speak to the board about the principal. Yes. Hello, my name is Annika Gaston, and I am an education junior from Henry Ford Early College. In hearing about the allegations that were laid upon Principal One, I could not help but to look back on the situations that have led me to create my opinions on his character. And although I do not want to make a statement declaring that anyone is lying or fabricating a story, because if someone was truly victimized, I believe there is power in speaking your truth and, holding your, and telling your truth. But in that same sentence, I would like to say and speak my truth if it means that I can bring clarity to my principal's name. There is no doubt 
that racism happens, but it is the most important thing that those in power are able to shut down the racism as soon as it begins. And being a minority of a minority, Principle one and principle two have done nothing but make me feel safe and protected inside of school. In specific, there was a situation in which I was called the N-word several times. But not only was that situation handled in the most professional manner, I was also comforted that this would not happen again, and it didn't. However, even going back further to my ninth grade year, there was a situation where a substitute teacher in my school told me, and I quote, do not do the sign of the cross in this classroom, it is controversial. And as broken and truly scared as I was experiencing something like this for the first time, Principal One assured me that this would not happen again and fired that substitute teacher. He gave me the opportunity to say the combinations at the board meeting and assured me that Henry Ford Early College would be a place where I can continue to excel as a student in a safe environment, which is exactly what has happened. I have never once felt out of place or uncomfortable in my learning environment. Principal One has always pushed us to do better and go forward further than we can even believe we can go. And if it weren't for Principal One, the community and joy for learning that has been created would not be there without him. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Bashir Alzaba. Bashir is too nervous to speak, so he's asking me to read his statement. I loved Henry Ford Early College. My brother went there. I thought that when I entered the program, it would be a good opportunity for me and for my future. Now, I don't like it anymore. I hate it. And many of my friends in the engineering program do as well because of the way we got treated. Last semester, I was having a hard time in one of my classes, tech math. On the day of my finals, my professor was late for class, so I had to go to another teacher's class. I started the final, and it was hard. I felt like I was going to fail it. So I pulled out my phone, and I cheated. This teacher sent me to the office. This is the same lowly teacher who sent an email to the entire school to show up here today against what I'm seeing. But the entire school can show up if they wanted to, and it wouldn't take away from my experience at Henry Ford Early College or what happened to me. That day, the AP taunted me that I would be making friends with tractors and was trolling me about going to Fortson. I spoke to the principal. He spoke to the, my mom. The AP told me that if I breathed the wrong way, I would get kicked out of the program. I went back to class. I felt ashamed and embarrassed. I was glad that the whole thing was over. At least I thought it was. A week after the cheating incident, after fourth hour, I was walking towards the lunch line with a group of friends for lunch. The principal was standing in the cafeteria. He pointed at me, said, come here, and then walked up to me. He grabbed me by the collar with one hand and used the other to push me backwards against the nearby wall. He then pinned me against the wall, put my shirt in a fist, and with force and pressure, pushed his fist against my collar around my throat. I literally felt the pressure on my throat. He then threatened to expel me from the program if I was caught cheating again. I was scared, very scared. I put my hands in the air. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. I was afraid because he was a six foot tall grown man towering over me, and I'm only a 16 year old kid who made a mistake. I was afraid because he was in a position of power, because I was scared he was gonna kick me out of the program and ruin my future. I felt overpowered, blindsided, and humiliated. I'm just a kid and no kid deserves to be assaulted, not for cheating, not for anything. And when I was, re I was reinstated in the college, but only after I got an advocate involved. But that is not enough for me or my family. We want justice. I want justice for what he did to me. And right now, justice is not being served. My own parents don't put a finger on me. If my dad had ever done something like that, you guys would be the first people to call CPS on him. If another adult on the street had done something like that to me, he would have been locked up and in jail. But in Dearborn Public Schools, your employees are above the law. You let them do these things to me. You let Mr. Fadlala assault me and get rewarded for it. You let them. Okay. To be clear. Yeah, watch this. No names, please. To be clear, a million people can come here and speak in support of the principal, but it will not take away from what happened to me. It, yes, I understand it. Sit down, please. I understand that. that Stop it. Guys, guys, sit down. There are students I will here. have you removed if you don't sit down and calm down. Sit down and calm down. Hey, please be quiet. Okay. 
be careful and please be careful and do not say names. People make mistakes. We're all human. Be careful. Please do not stay, say names. But it's not worth that kind of outburst. Continue, please. I just and I, I want to say one thing. The students are doing a really good job keeping their comments condensed, too. So I appreciate you doing that. Good afternoon. <laughs> what is your name? Uh, my name is Hassan Berry. All right, what would you like to speak about? Uh, HFC. Okay, go so, ahead. So, as referenced by the previous citizens in our community, uh, I also am a part of the engineering program, also known as Advanced Manufacturing at Henry Ford Early College. I first heard about what had been happening to our principal a couple months ago, and I felt as if, as if this was an unjust representation of who he was to our school. I felt the need to make a survey, a Google survey, as a student of the school to show this board here what we truly feel of our principal. This is the following. Principal one and all the administration members at H, oh, my apologies. This is the following submission from a um, Yemeni student in the school itself. And <coughs> I believe she was a part of it, uh, health. Our principal and all the administration members at HF at Henry Ford Early College has done nothing but support and guide us in every direction possible. They provide, us, they provide us with only the best. This year, we achieved being a Blue Ribbon National School. This school couldn't, ach couldn't have achieved it without Principal One and, its, and our teachers. After this achievement, our Principal One went ahead and threw out through a Blue Ribbon party filled with fun activities and food. All the students were allowed to attend and have the best time. I can say personally, this memory I'll always fondly look back on. Another thing that Principal One has done has supported allowing River, the River of Hope charity to go on at our school. They're, they are a Yemeni-led group of students who are raising to build wells in Yemen. Principal One not only supported, but let the students take time out of their day to create fundraisers, bake sales, raffles, and etc. 100% of the proceeds have gone to Yemen wells. I love this school because I personally got to donate and tell others outside of school about this fundraiser. I know no one has ever had a problem with Principal One or administration members. They are so welcoming and take care of their own. Principal One constantly reminds us to always study hard and achieve the highest grades in our tests. He always puts his students first and other administrators in Henry Ford Early College. This is not a submission by myself. It's a submission by a fellow student. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us your name? Hello, my name is Ali Berry, and I'm a student at Henry Ford Early College. As the president of the Henry Ford Early College Student Council, I speak today as a representative of the overall student body and bear witness to the undeniable gen generosity of our principal. This school's club has organized events, bake sales, fundraisers, under the purpose of raising money for a greater cause. Two of these events evolved around the project of funding the construction of wells in Yemen. Our principal had not only authorized such an event, but has contributed out of pocket to this cause. He has demonstrated nothing short of pure heart and eagerness toward providing assistance towards such a cause. He not only promotes fostered ethnic diversity in his school aimed to carry every student to their fullest potential, but he treats every student, every, as a child of his own. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leila Bizi. I'm here to speak, and this is Mariam Swaidan. I'm here to speak on behalf of our principal. The person I am proud to call my principal has always provided my classmates and I with the perfect resources to benefit us and our education. He has prepared us to be college and career ready. We were taught time management, confidence, leadership, and analytical abilities, among other things. All of the traits we learned are indicative of a successful college student. These tactics are the foundation of not only my success, but my classmates. I have never had a principal that treats us as his own until I came to Henry Ford Early College. Out of all principals I've ever had, I can genuinely say I felt as though none of them cared enough, cared enough to help guide us except for him. He wants to see us succeed. He is an outstanding principal who works hard to ensure that our teachers are prepared to be classroom leaders. He makes sure that our resources and materials are available, and he promotes professional growth opportunities for all students, no matter what their race is. 
Additionally, to the woman who decided to slander the well-respected teachers at the early college across all social media platforms by calling them Captain Saver Racist and claim that they are manipulating students, it really shows how you are as a person and, and how being an outsider causes misconceptions like this. As you called people to stand against principle one and told them to come join us at the board meeting, I guess that makes you a manipulator if we, are, if we are using your logic. What kind of a person would act like this in front of students? If you think acting like this is gonna win you a position as state representative, you're wrong. We all stand for what is right. That doesn't mean we are being manipulated. You want everything your way, but we will not let you get in the way of our principal's success. He is a man who stands up for everything just, and we are great because he's the one who guides us to be the people we are. For those of for those of you who wish to regard us as pawns and our teachers as manipulative, this is incorrect. As students, we should have the right to voice our opinions and should not be silenced. As someone who has spent the last two years at Henry Ford Early College, accusations like this has never have never come up like the have never come up about the principle about principle number one. People that sit behind a screen making false accusations is exaggeration and exaggerating the situation are causing many of the students concern of what is going to happen with their principal and what will happen to their school. Unfortunately, due to the circumstances, all HFE students will no longer be welcomed by principal one outside in the morning and in positive motivations throughout the day. Once again, I have to say thank you students. You were very well spoken and you were direct. Sorry. Oh, we have another. Yeah, sorry, I, I remain seated just because there's a long line. Um, Kareem Kadu, um, not going to be addressing you guys on the issue that's been mentioned a few exactly. times. Um, as many of you know, I'm a graduating senior from Dearborn High School. Um, our graduation is on the 11th, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to, um, you know, thank the entire district, Dr. Maleko specifically, the board, for all that you guys have done for us students. Um, I'm a member of Dr. Maleko's Student Advisory Council. Um, I've been a member of that council for three years, and prior to that, I was a member of the uh, middle school version of that, the uh, SEDSAC. And I just have to say, I really have not seen a district take student feedback the way Dearborn has, um, and whether that's from SSAC to the board listening to us, sitting in on our meetings, um, and it is just greatly appreciated by everybody. Dr. Maleko, you've done a great job, and we appreciate, all of the students appreciate the job you've done. Same goes to you as the board. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to just say thank you to you guys and not sure if I'll be able to make the uh, SSAC presentation at the next June board meeting, but in case I wasn't able to, I want to take that opportunity today. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Kareem. Are there any other students that had filled up blue cards? We want to make sure that you get a chance to, to get home at a decent bedtime and not stare at your phones for five hours. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, I will continue um, next. Uh, Mrs. Asma Mozip would like to come to the speak to the board about Henry Ford Early College. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good evening. I am here today, first and foremost, as a concerned parent and as a Dearborn resident. I actually had the opportunity to read the report, the recommendation investigation that was um, issued by DPS regarding the Henry Ford Early College. And in that report, DPS actually concluded that discriminatory, discriminatory and disparaging comments were used in several instances from the DPS employee. And this was based on student witnesses, teachers who gave their testimony, and even though this individual initially denied it, never happened, audio recording heard it. Everybody heard it. And because of this, on May 10th, a memo was sent out advising everyone that this employee would not return <clears throat> in the position that they held. Yet, last week, on June 2nd, this employee hosted the virtual orientation for incoming freshmen next year. 
and was introduced as the director of the Henry Ford Early College, even though you had recordings of the disparaging remarks he made. I mean, you could say the student was lying, you could say the teacher maybe, but when you have an audio recording and you, and you send out a memo saying they no longer, no longer hold that position and they come on June 2nd and they're representing that position, it speaks volumes. It speaks volumes to the students who came forth and spoke to you guys of what they were experiencing. The job of the employee is not to, not to treat who he chooses fairly or kindly. It's to treat everybody, everybody kindly. And then in the investigation and recommendation, it states most staff believe the employee's jokes, and we all heard it on audio, jokes are made in good nature, not intended to, defend, uh, to offend. First, when are discriminatory remarks and disparaging comments about somebody and where they come from in good nature? When are they not intended to offend? Per se, they are intended to offend. Second, racism is racism, discrimination is discrimination, regardless whether anyone believes they are made in good nature, May nature I ask you to or jokes. Up, please. And then the recommendation says the employee shows remorse and appreciates the seriousness. Did he appreciate it in February of 2020 when a, a warning was put in his file? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, next, Abdul Malik Kasim would like Kasim would like to come to speak to the board about the early college. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Abdul Malik Kasim. My colleagues and I are here today on behalf of the, of the American PAC, and we're also parents who have children in schools. The motive behind our attendance is to show solidarity with our students and to oppose discrimination and racism practiced by a principal who's supposed to embody the values of equality and coexistence and be a motivator to all students in all, all means that contrib contribute to their success in the future. We are here to say it loud and clear that we will not allow sick racist remarks and actions to persist among our students. We demand we demand a strict accountability in order to preserve our schools from negative energies. We must ensure a healthy learning environment to all our students. And to those who stand with the wrongdoing of the principal, we say, your bullying tactics are not allowed anymore. Thank you. Next, Mr. Bilal Darwich would like to come to his to speak to the board about Henry Ford Early College. Good evening, hello Darwish. I'm sorry about what happened earlier, President and Trustees. You know, I was born and raised in Dearborn. I went to Maples Elementary from preschool to eighth grade, then on to Fortson High School. Graduated in 1991. I'm not sure where you guys went to school, where you grew up, but where most of this audience grew up and went to school. And I say that with all due respect to everybody. After reading the report and seeing what was said, where I grew up, I had a football coach in Forces. I'm gonna just say a little story. He taught and he coached also uh, Matter of fact, in the South End. Ninth grade, still summertime, we didn't even start school yet. In the, in the gymnasium, he beat up the whole freshman football team. Knocked us around like we were, we were balls. The football coach that was paid by the Dearborn Public School District. None of our parents went down there, cried. When I was, when I was, 
in elementary school. When I was in elementary school. He has school, the floor. When I was in elementary school. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying. When I was in elementary school, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, our teachers and counselors, if we did something wrong, they tell us, touch our toes. You get a whack on, it, on your rear end. You get a thunk in your head. We did nothing. I'm not saying what happened was wrong. What's right, I'm sorry. But what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing, I'm not saying touching a student or anything like that is right. I'm not saying that at all, that that's right at all. But what I'm seeing is a political agenda, 110%. This is nothing, this is causing, with all due respect, I know a lot of the people in here. I know the, I know the, the board here. What I'm seeing is a divide. This is causing nothing but a divide in our community. I grew up, I grew up in a community. I have to say this. I also need to ask you to wrap it up, you're almost no out problem. of time. With Lebanese, Palestinian, Yemeni, Iraqi, whites, blacks. I've never seen this. I've never seen this in Dearborn. When someone says, a Lebanese, guy said to, a Lebanese guy said a Yemeni guy or a Palestinian or this. I've never seen this before. This is nothing but politics. This is causing the divide in our children. I'm not worried about the adults. We're, we're bigger than that. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Next, Mrs. Amal Harhara would like to come to the, speak to the board about Henry Ford Early College. I'm speaking, good afternoon. We've been corresponding through email. You guys know me very well. I'm speaking on behalf of my husband who submitted a card and also Amir al Saidi who also submitted a card. I would just like to start off by saying that at the beginning of the meeting, Dr. Maliko, you said that students are first and there is no political agenda when it comes to being fair with the children. This couldn't be farther from the truth. I am the mother of an exceptional student in Dearborn who has been failed by many staff and especially leaders in this district. My son was physically, verbally, and mentally abused by your staff member. It was my son. My son wanted to speak to you directly today, but because we have educators and community members who are coming here today to publicly dismiss, ignore, or outright erase patterns of ethnic intimidation and racism, I decided to keep him safe and at home. I did not want him to witness grown adults and people entrusted with caring for our children ignore the damage that has been done to many students simply because it hasn't happened to them or their children. And this failure to protect my son does not fall only at this administrator's feet. In 2020, there was already a corrective action in his personal file outlining a reprimand of the very same complaints filed two, year, two years later at the expense of my son and other children. The failure is yours, Dr. Maliko. Please don't use names. My son is a 4.3 GPA student. He is beloved by his peers and his teachers. I only mention this because some may think that without this quality, he would deserve what happened to him. No one deserves for this to happen to them. My son is damaged because of you. He wouldn't have to go through this had you taken care of it years ago, specifically two years ago, but here we are. My son had to endure this emotional abuse at the hands of this administrator, and your report had the audacity to say it was all in good nature and not meant to hurt anyone's feelings. He suffer suffered from anxiety and had to undergo counseling because of this administrator. These are real students who have been inflicted by this. Comments such as, if you don't do well, I'm going to send you back to Yemen. Clean up your mess. You're, this isn't Lapeer Park. Ah, those Yemenis. Didn't I tell you not to hang out with those Yemenis? Don't hang out with that group over there, referring to the Yemeni kids. You Yemenis are always hungry because you don't have any food in your country. This was specifically said to my son. 
After saying this particular remark, he degradingly put his hands on each side of my son's head and Please. turned his head to the cafeteria staff and told him to say thank you, humiliating him in front of staff and his peers after he said that degrading comment. You have witnesses to this. It's in your report. And let us not forget the segregation of students based on their ethnicity caught on audio recording. This happened to my son, a 15-year-old. I You're, need you to wrap it up, please. I have uh, three blue cards in. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank yes. you. Your Go mission ahead. states, Dear One Public Schools will provide an exceptional learning environment that empowers every student to succeed in life today and in the future. The assumption that the learning environment at Henry Ford Early College has been exceptional is a lie. And empowering every student, we all know that the students that has, it has empowered. And I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today if every student was being empowered to succeed. The district prides itself so much when it comes to social emotional learning. How is it possible for you to teach our children social emotional learning strategies, to teach them how to, per your website, feel empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions when your professionals are unable to implement these strategies? In HR's final report of the investigation involving my son, it was concluded that, and I'm going to quote this per your actual report, the director's use of ethnically biased and discriminatory language with both staff and students has negatively impacted the culture, climate, and learning environment of the Henry Ford Early College and Dearborn Public Schools. Just this past weekend, a teacher from Henry Ford Early College, my son's teacher, a teacher that he looked up to, was actively rallying up students through her district platform asking students to come support someone that investigations have already concluded as a racist. Manipulating our children to swing the outcome of these complaints is both appalling and disgusting. To this teacher, someone who may be in this room today, your job is to protect our children, not support your boss because he treated you well. Shame on you. Yet the solicitation is just a sim single example of the pattern of bias the district has and is exhibiting <coughs> throughout this investigation and throughout its daily workings. My final question to you, what message are you sending to the students who are affected by all of this? That they don't matter? That we should expect more students to be affected by similar inappropriate actions in the future because you refuse to take appropriate disciplinary action against adults? Adults that you have favored and protected above the students you were entrusted to protect? I'll tell you the message that we heard loud and clear from all of this. Is that contrary to your vision statement? Students first? Students do not matter at all. This is the promotion letter that was sent out today. The director was investigated by Dearborn Public Schools and found that he was extremely discriminatory against Yemeni children. Rather than facing consequences for the racism and bigotry that he displayed, he was rewarded. His reward is right here. He was promoted. He was promoted by Dearborn Public Schools, by you, Mr. Maleko, and by the board. is suggestive of your belief of how our kids should be treated. This is highly indicative that racism doesn't matter to you, that discrimination does not matter to you. You are setting a precedent for how everyone else is allowed to treat minority children. You have set the precedent. Now you are accountable. You have given him a platform for which he can behave in such a way that is discriminatory, offensive, abusive to our children. You have provided that safe environment to him, not to our children. It is your responsibility to create a safe environment for our kids, and you have done the opposite by promoting him. Physical abuse of a minor has no place in our district. Racism has no place in our district. He has no place in our district. And if you condone this, you have no place in our district. You have failed my son and any other student that has been subjected to this abuse. This will not end here. Next, Mr. Saber Zamzami would like to come to speak to the board about Henry Ford Early College. I'll call the name at the end as well, unless somebody. What was the name again, Trustee Watts? 
Uh, Saber Zamzami. Saber Zamzami. Oh, maybe. Like, I will try again at the end. At okay. the end maybe either. Thank you. Um, is this the order now? Okay. Um, next, Renee Callery would like to come to speak to the board about honors acknowledgement of Kiwanis Key Club at the Dearborn Schools. And I apologize if I mispronounce names. That's okay. I answer to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Wait, my phone, I turned it off because I lost my battery. Okay. Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Renee, and I am a member of the Dearborn Kiwanis Club and an advisor to the key clubs at, um, in our sponsor clubs. In our club, we sponsor six key clubs in the Dearborn surround and the Dearborn surrounding areas, along with the Circle K Club at U of M Dearborn. Key Club is a global organization with thousands of clubs in more than 38 countries, um, and Key Club is the biggest organization run by students in the world. These students join Key Club with a GPA of 3.5 and above. They are looking for an opportunity to make a difference in the community, to make a difference with their school. They develop initiatives and leadership skills by serving their schools and their communities. One of their objectives aims to cooperate with the school principal and teachers and provide the students with invaluable experience in working together. During their time in Key Club, they learn leadership skills. They learn how to make a difference in the community. They learn how to lead meetings, conventions, project planning, team planning, and fundraising. They do it all while maintaining a 3.5 GPA. They are required to volunteer for 40 hours per year, and we base these hours as a guideline for them to earn the honor of wearing a cord, a stole, or a medallion during any graduation ceremony. These students are serious. Who are, they are our future. We try to teach them leadership, engagement in the community, and to be proud of the seniors that they are or any other club that is allowed to wear this apparel. They have worked very hard in the years they are in Key Club. And not to be able to receive this honor in front of their family and peers and the leadership of the staff is very disheartening to them and their families. We don't want these kids to go behind the school's rules for any graduation ceremony and put on a cord or a stole or a medallion as they walk off the stage. This is not what we teach them. So I am here today asking for you all to consider honoring the key club in our schools on the same stage and the same manner of awards that others receive. We believe in them. They are our future leaders, as you have seen here today. We are asking our key club students be allowed to be a part of this graduation honors recognition of accomplishment for community service, leadership, and grade point average. <coughs> Thank you for your time and consideration because these kids deserve the same recognition any student in these schools receive during all graduation ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Mr. Eddie Fakuri would like to come to speak to the board about closure on the issue he raised in May. Good evening. Um, my name is Eddie Fakuri. I'm before you today. Uh, as a parent to bring closure to a topic I presented to this esteemed body on March 14th. Um, at that time, I presented to you all a, a conflict that my family has been dealing with for years, um, where now currently my daughter, my fourth child, um, the others are grown and out of the district, has recently experienced the same torment and I will say religious bullying um, that we did. So as a singular Arab Christian in her class, she was picked on by a select few students um, who unfortunately are taught the wrong things. Um, we as a family recognize the greatness of our community, the diversity, and the love that we have for each other. Um, so I presented the problem, I proposed an idea, and I came today to just say thank you um, to this board and to the administration, because shortly after that moment, I did receive the call, a meeting was held. We were finally listened to as far as solutions. Those solutions were applied, and they're being 
put into more of an educational training component, which is extremely helpful. And what I'd like to do is, besides thank Glenn, Dr. Malenko, and the team that he brought from the school, I'd like to thank the numerous phone calls we received in support, but I'd also like to thank Trustee Barry, because that night he also approached me. But most importantly, I'd like to thank Trustee uh, Adel Moza, who went out of his way to understand what the problem was, meet with my family, and made sure that it was followed through by the administration, and it was. And second to that, I want to thank Principal Rayback. Ray, uh, Principal Please Rayback brought a team. I'm sorry. Please don't use names. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, the principal did a phenomenal job of bringing the right team together and making sure that moving forward we have progress and we're going to monitor it and things are much better for my daughter and for my family. And so I just wanted to say thank you and bring closure to everyone that actually reached out to us and made sure that the solution was had. And we hope it will progress in that same direction, and, uh, and at least in, as we monitor it. So thank you all and thank you for your time. Thank you for bringing us that update, Mr. Victoria. Next, Mr. David Higgins would like to come to speak to the board about uh, a thank you to all in Dearborn schools. Good evening, President Donald, trustees, and Dr. Maleko. My name is David Higgins. I'm Principal William Ford and former president of ADSA. Less than two weeks ago, William Ford held their First City Beautiful Cleanup Parade in over two years due to COVID. It's a beautiful day, beautiful celebration intended by the mayor, chief of police, county commissioners, several City Beautiful commissioners and trustees. Can I say your names? <laughs> sure. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> Trustee Barry, Trustee Petlichkoff, and Trustee Watts, and many, many other cabinet members were also in attendance that day. We celebrated the new tree that the mayor had put in on Arbor Day, we actually named it Arbor. We paraded around the school and then assembled in our cafeteria and our gym with over 650 students, 75 staff members, and probably 100 um, other special guests and parents. It was a great assembly with student and guest pledges to take care of our environment, beginning with our school and neighborhoods. The assembly included music, cheers, pledges, and even a few dance moves by the mayor and our superintendent. I wanted to share this experience with you all just because it was certainly a celebration. Finally, an opportunity for us to celebrate together over two years without these special events in our schools. These past two years, including this past year of recovery, have been long and have been challenging. But we did more than survive. We flourished, and I believe we are stronger than we were before. And so I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone from our students to our parents, our support staff, everyone at ASC, our directors in all departments, Dr. Maleko's uh, consistent in leadership, positive leadership, and the ongoing support from all of you on the Board of Education. And finally, to our absolutely amazing, amazing teachers. So I'm proud and blessed to be part of Dearborn Schools, so thank you. Thank you. Next, Judge Bazzi would like to come to speak to the board about school district accomplishments. President McDonald, trustees, thank you very much for giving me a few minutes to speak. I want to say first, my comments aren't directed at what's happened, what most of the people have talked about. I simply don't know enough about that particular situation to speak about it. Over the past few years, the board has faced unprecedented challenges. While the public did not always agree with the board, this board got through it and continued to provide the essential services our children needed and deserved. Seeing how well the board came together with the schools under the leadership of Dr. Maleko, you worked together under these incredibly trying and difficult times. It is incredibly disheartening at this time to see that what, uh, what has happened in recent months. While some community members have chosen to highlight anything negative they can find, which is their right, they are also, also choosing to ignore and discredit all the amazing accomplishments of this district under the leadership of this board 
but under the leadership of Dr. Maleko as well. I would like, and I, can I say Dr. Maleko? Can you say the superintendent? I'm trying <laughs> superintendent. to Superintendent, okay, I'll say the superintendent. <laughs> I would, like to, I would like to acknowledge and highlight those accomplishments as a reminder of how lucky we are as a district to have a leader that puts students first. And the results of his efforts are obvious in the following recognitions and awards. 2018 through 2024, the district received four meritorious budget awards from the Association of School Business Officials International. From 2017 to 2012, Five national blue, uh, blue ribbon awards from the United States Department of Education, those awards which hang proudly in back of the district itself. In 2019, our superintendent received the State of Michigan Superintendent of the Year Award. Only one person can get that award every year in the state of Michigan, and it was our superintendent. And that, and that was from the Michigan Associ Association of Superintendent and Administrators. In 2019, the Dearborn Chamber of Commerce Business Person of the Year. In 2019, Michigan Labor Relations Awardee from the Michigan Labor Management Association. In 2019 through 2020, the Bridge Magazine Academic Champs for College Admission. In 2019, the National Title I Distinguished School Award. In 2019, the Mackinac City rated, Mackinac City rated, I'm sorry, Mackinac Center rated Dearborn as one of the top districts for achievements, which I'm proud to say it is, and I have three children that are a reflection of those achievements. In 2018, the Special Recognition for Dis Distinguished School Improvement Process Award. In 2018, the Bridge Magazine Academic Champs for College Readiness. In 2018, Mesa Cover Story for High School Graduation Rates. In 2018, recognition recognized Start by a student up, during please. the annual, I'm gonna go really fast. Okay. Recognized by a student during the annual Superintendent Honors Night in Dearborn in 2018, recognized by the California State Senate for providing support to California school <coughs> districts in 2017, Bridge Magazine Academic Champs in 2015 to present, rated highly effective by the Dearborn Board of Education. I'm gonna ask the Dearborn Board of Education to continue your leadership in this process and provide the support that this district needs, that our superintendent needs to continue to make this district a wonderful district. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Mike Hatcham would like to come to speak to the board about quality of education. Good evening. My name is Mike Hatcham. Um, many of you know me, many of you don't. Um, I do a lot of, I'd say, positive political work in this city. Lately, it's been brought to my attention um, on the administration at several schools from teachers, especially, and teachers that have left the school district, talking about the conditions that they face. In this envelope right here, I have complaints from teachers that I wish that I could put out but names are in these letters. I've gone to Dearborn Public Schools. You know, I've gone to Dearborn Public Schools when it was in its golden age, and I've graduated when it was in its dark age. You know, I graduated from Fortson. For God's sakes, we didn't even have bathroom stalls that doors close at Fortson. Okay, do, do we still have them or no? We still don't have bathroom stalls. Let's face it. We are one of the districts that, have, that has the biggest budget, okay? And I'm not blaming the board right now. I want you guys to go back home tonight, reassess yourselves, reassess the people that you guys relay the message on to, to your administration, the higher ups, whoever you guys meet with, your, your morning coffee meets, however you guys want to call it, <laughs> I mean, Dearborn Public Schools has been going down. Let's face it, some, someone before me came up and started talking about how beautiful it is, you know, the grass is always green. Actually, it's not, you know. And honestly, I'd love to put out what's in this yellow envelope, but I'm afraid if I do, I can't guarantee the lives of these people. And that's what I told them. And honestly, I'm ashamed to be up here as a product of Dearborn Public Schools to be addressing you guys today like this. We need to fix Dearborn Public Schools. Let's stop being a joke 
in front of everybody else. We just lost 42 teachers from Dearborn Public Schools to Plymouth Canton Schools. Teachers are dropping like flies. No one wants to teach here. We have a high rate of turnover on teachers. We need to figure out what is going on. Okay, the administration is always getting benefits. We're always getting, not me, but the administration is always getting you know, more money in their paychecks. Wrap up your comments, please. Okay. We need to do something about it. And honestly, I'm going to start doing more investigation. And I will start calling the news to put you guys and tell you guys that you guys need to stop. Okay. Angela Beasy, social media concern. Angela Beasy, and actually here I am addressing the board members and the trustees mostly. Uh, I would like to start by saying that it's appalling in regards to the double standards that was used on social media stating that DPS is trying to use our kids as pawns for publicly for a publicity stunt and to come out to support principal one for today's meeting. It is a shame to witness city politics in becoming contagious and it's going into our school district. This is nothing but a political agenda and it has nothing to do with Dearborn Public Schools. We all know that we live in a very diverse city and all of Durban Public Schools has diversity of students. We are very proud to know that our children have been exposed to many different races and cultures. Social media should not and must not be used as a platform to degrade and insult all of our DPS uh, schools, specifically Henry Ford Early College and Henry Ford Early Co College staff members. We are parents and we all know that our children like to make up excuses to make themselves look, look like the victims, especially when they get in trouble, be it at home or even worse, at school. I heard it many times from my children and from others. Why is it that they feel only student one and student two were the only victims that felt anxiety? Or we have to believe their words. When you have all... No. No, it's not. Hey. One is not enough. Okay. One is not enough. I will have decorum in this in this room. When you when you have over ninety percent of students stating that this teacher please address the board. Address the board. When you have ninety percent of students stating that Mr. or President or Principal uh, no One names. Okay. Principal One is one of the most leading, respectful men out there and that they just can't stand him because it is a political agenda that they are trying to do. We will not allow it. I'm not done. I'm not done. And I would like to add, why was, the question, why was the question asked, how many Yemenis and Iraqi students were kicked out of the program? What kind of a question is that? Why is political division trying to, trying to, why is please, political division trying to thoughts. be caused on social media? I thought we were smarter than that and we should know our limits. Our kids, and, our kids are learning and watching from us. <clears throat> Thank you. This is not how adults are supposed to set examples. The question should be regardless of ethnicity. Thank you for your thoughts and your, your comments. Okay. Next. You're very welcome. And I am very proud to say that uh, Principal One deserved a well awarded promotion. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Everyone else. Is I think a bunch of BS. Next. 
Mr. Bilal Hamoud would like to come to speak to the board about school infrastructure. <clears throat> Sit down, please take your seats. We have another speaker ready to speak. Please sit down. I'll have to have you removed. Sit. Please sit down. Please be quiet. Everyone, please be quiet. We have another speaker who deserves our respect and our attention. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello to the board. Uh, good evening. My name is Bilal Hamoud. Um, I come speaking on behalf of many residents who have had some conversations with residents who have a deeply rooted respect and appreciation for this board and for the school district, residents and students who have been proud members of this community, community for generations. There is an issue I've heard, and I, I want to just be a, a vessel to relay this message. There is this lack of trust that exists right now within this district, between the parents, between the teachers, between the students, and between the board. There isn't a transparent communication that's occurring between the students, uh, sorry, for the students, there isn't enough transparency in what's happening from the board to the rest of the district. It, and I don't mean this to be an attack, I really don't, because I'm a proud product of the school district. I have a lot of appreciation for it, and as many have stated, the academics speak for itself. But the reason why there's so many people in this room, and I, and I don't know the full context of the situation, but the reason why there's always a lot of people in this room is because, well, it's clear, it, we're not putting out enough information on what's happening. If there is an incident like this, I want A, B, C, D, and E, not just an A oversight statement. I really don't think that just the peachy and the good is what we should be hearing. That, and this is all I want to say is that, look at the, this uh, care hawk system. A lot of the residents and a lot of the board didn't even know the status. That should be communicated out. What is the timeline? A through Z, what is the plan for implementing? How far are we in progress? People would feel more comfortable if that transparency existed. And that's all I think we can ask for, is more transparency in communication, more frequent communication. I went to Wayne State University, and if someone looked at someone funny, there was a full report drafted, it was communicated to all the students, it was in some cases over communication, but it made the students feel safe, the staff felt safe, and they felt like they could trust the, the system. There was more of that trust because of the frequency of communication, and that's really what I'm asking for from this board. This board here today is an increase in communication on a lot of these issues that we're hearing so that the once a month meetings that occur aren't packed with people trying to figure out what's going on, but are, are, are informed citizens and informed residents of this community. Because again, I, I love this district and I just want to see it succeed. Thank you, that is all. Thank you for sharing your thoughts.